really something else. I often find myself sitting here looking at these masterpieces and studying them in, in awe as I've always been since I was a child. How my father could make such a beautiful painting. How anybody could do that. It's just so captivating and it's cool to look at. It's, it has this nice feeling for me. This, this one in particular, I really love it too with the solar sail and the other big ones here. I always felt that this painting, for me, represented the, the pinnacle of our lives as a family. It was like the, the happy time. And my father knew he had made something wonderful. And I always felt it quite strange. I don't know how else to explain this. Um, well, that's a story for another time. So the longer you look at it, the more you can appreciate it, there's, there's more to it. And it's, uh, it's something that it's like an amazing feeling he was able to convey. I to describe that. Having a father and mother, both such wonderful artists, was, uh, there's a lot to, I don't know how else should I say. Um, I had many different interests as a kid growing up. Art was one of them, but there's no way I, I could even compared to the skill both my parents had, especially my father. I mean, well, my mom was very talented too, but, um, you know, it took him a very long time. And it was a lot of planning, and I used to bring him some tea with milk. I would knock on the door so as not to disturb him. My mom would say, bring him some tea, it's okay now. And he'd be in the middle of painting with the jazz on it, had the paintbrush. And he was like dancing with the brush. It was like he, I've never seen him do anything like that other than when he was painting. And it was a very intimate thing. So he liked to be alone and in private and uninterrupted. And there were some summers there, he was on disability, he was sick. He still managed to make some beautiful paintings. And, um, my goodness, it, you know, the more you look at stuff, the more, you know, sometimes you can find subtle innuendos. And, you know, things um, may not necessarily appear at, at first as what you, what you think they are, you know. But um, I had so much fun with my dad. Look, we had an electric crutch band. That was an electric crutch that him and Spider Webb would play in us. Let your cutch band, I played with them a few times actually. The reed was broken on my saxophone, so it wasn't so, it didn't turn out too, too good, but it was a good time. And I had so much fun with my dad as a kid. This is the studio he had in Mount Vernon. That's me. I made this painting in his studio. And so now, you know, I'm just trying to save what we built. You know, it's a mortgage to the max. There's no sense of selling it. There's no equity. And uh, basically just, you know, trying to honor my dad's legacy as best I can. I mean, look at that. Not a lot of people can do that, you know. I, I know there's a lot of great artists out there, but just look at this for a second. It makes me think about all sorts of things. You know, and I'm sure, you know, there's a lot of things you could draw like as an analogy, but just as a painter, as an artist, his mastery of composition and light and things that make you go, hmm, it starts to make you think it's just such a, 
great feeling. I feel like I'm, I, I spend time looking at these paintings, even though I can no longer be with my dad. This one up there had a magnifying glass that was attached to the, the cable in the middle. It's supposed to have a magnifying glass, but it came off a long time ago. It screws on there. It's called recognition theory. And this one here where it looks like there's some doo-doo in a shoe and indeed a dead dehydrated rat uh, is called the trial of libretto. My dad was very much inspired by Marcel Duchamp. And Salvatore Dali gave my parents art lessons, so I'm sure they couldn't have left not being inspired somehow by Salvatore Dali. The reason why there's not a lot more paintings in here is because my family had a lot of problems. Cancer devastated our small family. So sadly, it's only a limited amount of artwork. And uh, this beautiful house. It's a very happy times, very happy memories. Very good childhood growing up here. And then some really terrible, a terrible series of rather unfortunate and tragic events happened to my family. And the paintings all but ceased and my father and I managed to make a few drawings here and there, so did my mom, a couple of small paintings. But nothing like this. And the other big ones over there. I mean, that took him years, and he was so focused, and just like, it's just, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in awe still. I, I think to myself, wow, how am I, could, how could I possibly live up to that? How could I, you know? I mean, my paintings pale in comparison to my father's. As you can see, here's an example of a few from over here. It's just not, you know, as good. You just can't even hold a candle to me, you know? And I was supposed to help my dad finish this Red Runner triptych series. It's an orange Red Runner right there. We'll help him paint it in. He kept saying to me, yeah, he wants to get his studio back, come in here and paint. He bought some paint, kept getting sick. My brother kept giving him a hard time too, he wouldn't move his stuff out of here. Kept getting in trouble, my dad kept giving him money. Now my brother wants to try to force me to sell the house even though there's no equity in it. I told him I'll give you some money couple cars and he's like no you know dude, I'm gonna sell it just you know to, to spite me and I'm like well no you can't force the sale of something that technically you don't necessarily own because I pay the mortgage here I did all the maintenance here to the tune of 63 grand 36,000 of which I paid the mortgage and Dad left me the house, you know, to preserve it and to keep it and not to sell it. And there's a mortgage of 220 and the house is worth 240. There's no equity in that. The broker fee and commission alone would wipe out any profit, you would realize. And then there's the claim. So, unfortunately, now I'm arguing with my brother when we should be 
helping my father get some recognition, get this painting to a museum. Really. You know, that's what families should do. They should be together and help one another. Unfortunately, I'm the only one who seems to really care about this painting, you know, and to be interested, honestly. I mean, this is a beautiful painting, you know. This should be in a museum. It was supposed to be in the Whitney. We had tried, you know, my father and I, both, you know, we both tried, you know, but it takes a very long time to get to Guggenheim or the Whitney, you know, and become famous. It's not something that necessarily happens overnight in the art world. But fame is just a bullshit trip and money can't buy your health. So he at least was able to make some beautiful art. He did the best he could. and shouldn't be judged by whether or not he's famous or not. Just like a lot of musicians who are famous or artists who are famous. Yeah, you know, fame is not the judge of, you know, what's awesome or not, you know? You know, monetarily it can be awesome, you know? So, otherwise things, you know, aren't necessarily worth anything if they're not sold, you know? Art is a strange business, you know? Things go by what's that's sold in the secondary market, you know? So, anyway, I promised my father I'd, I'd sell the artwork and, and put the big ones, I'd never separate the big ones, put them in a museum and then lease it out. And, and for, for about 25 to 50% of the proceeds, the profits are a fair percentage, I would uh, split with Andreas from the sales of the artwork, but keep the house. This is the studio we built, are you kidding me? Why would I ever want to sell it, you know? People can come in here and view this beautiful painting and view the other ones, and, and it's like a museum. It's like a gallery, it really is. <laughs> Bafi's Studio, Fine Art Gallery. So, yeah, it's very hard to lose a parent. It's very hard to lose uh, a parent that you took care of for a very, very long time after losing my mom. I else to take care of my dad, so I took care of him for a really long time. I guess the, the biggest regret that I have is that we didn't make more paintings together. Something that really kept telling me, oh, look in the studio, Ollie, we're gonna do this one together. You know, it was always, it was like that next big painting lesson he was gonna give me, the next big art lesson. So he told me, Ali, just keep drawing from real life and keep making art. Since I miss, miss my dad so much, I feel too sad to make much art at all. It's just kind of a hard uh, feeling when you, when, you, uh, when you lose someone and the grief kind of really messes with your creativity. Yeah. But anyway... Such a beautiful painting. It's called Ornus Ocula. Each painting had these little stories behind it. This one he made from my mother. It's another one that he made about me. This one he made from my brother for his birthday. brother didn't like it of course didn't think it was funny because he had some kind of car problem and my dad tried to make light of it bailing him out and putting a license plate giving it to as a birthday present Jace didn't think it was very funny and that's when our family started to really fall to pieces and when my mom died that was the glue that really just held us together and anyway Thank you kindly for your support, and uh, please check out some of our fine art prints. A very, very splendid and beautiful home decor uh, that my father and I both uh, managed to print out.